I say to all of you, hold on. Hold on. Yes, Newark has incredible systemic challenges. In fact, our unemployment rate is about 14%. Close to 40% of eligible adults are disengaging from the workforce. About half of our residents live about 200% below the poverty line. And less than 15% have a post-secondary degree. What does that mean? Does it mean that we sit in our homes and we lose hope? It means that our first 100 days or the first year, we have to dedicate it to securing employment for Newark residents. Yeah. Yeah. Those employ hundreds of thousands of people, but the majority of these jobs are not held by us. Besides enforcing the obvious first source ordinances and demanding that developers hire residents and that we hire them ourselves, we have to train our residents for the growing job sectors in our economy. We have to align our technical and training programs with the market. We also have to involve the school system and ensure that our students can walk into entry-level jobs that are available to them, that they have the soft skills and technical expertise to be employable when they leave high school. The state has identified at least seven areas where job growth is predictable. Almost all of these industries live and thrive right here in our city. We have six universities, three major hospitals, museum, performing arts center, arena, credential insurance company, and Port Authority, which covers education, arts and entertainment, healthcare, finance, and commerce. These are growing sectors in our state and our city. We have to leverage our assets to help foster economic development, also train our residents in warehousing and transportation, incubate small businesses to serve as growing organizations on our seafloor. We have to prepare people for jobs in marketing and advertising, technology and technical support for arts and entertainment, healthcare and sciences. We have to change the way we see healthcare in the city of Newark and expand our options. We are witnessing the closing of these hospitals because of the, amount of the enormous amount of charity care and lack of insurance. We have to begin to change our health care from providing care for people that are sick or severely ill to preventative health care. That is, we need more accessible care closer to homes where people live and dealing with folks before they get sick and help stabilize and care for people that have health care issues before it becomes an emergency. So we have to stop the line on an emergency room and begin to spread health care throughout our city. This helps us. This helps us to use our hospitals as economic engines for our city and expand access and develop possible jobs for our residents. And because we have the largest container port on the eastern seaboard and the third largest port in the country and growing, we should be incubating and supporting local businesses to grow with international partners and sister cities. And because about 40% of our residents do not own a car, it is crucial that we begin to organize transportation in a way that it provides access to these growing industries. People in the South Florida live about five to ten minutes away from the airport and seaport, but it takes them over an hour to get there. We have to connect our arteries, our communities, to the jobs that we want them to have. More jobs equalize, equal stabilize families, and stabilize families lead to better neighborhoods. I also spoke of half of us living 200% below the poverty line. And that is not all unemployment folks. Some of these people actually do work and are making below the minimum wage. We heard our president quote the distant numbers of those that were working that were receiving minimum wage. But we have people in our community that are working below that wage. I agree with the president of the United States that the minimum wage needs to be lifted to a living wage. That we have to engage employers in and around our city to pay our workers a wage that helps them not only pay their rent, but have enough left over to feed his or her family to further their standard of living, to contribute to society with dignity and with pride under the leadership of Councilman Rice, supporting a PLA agreement to make sure workers are able to have a bargaining unit to protect their labor, and that we have apprenticeship programs that will bring more of us into the steady and fair employment market. We cannot brag about how many jobs we bring to Newark if Newarkers are not employed at those jobs. Around the news, you heard stories of the deplorable rates of violence in Chicago reaching over 
500 murders annually. Even the president talked about a young lady, Hydea Pendleton, that was murdered after attending the inauguration. We have a few Hydea Pendletons of our own. In Newark, we have Sierra Lee, Central High School student killed in front of a family's home. We have Dawn Reddick shot by a straight bullet leaving a fast food restaurant. Or Officer Johnson killed waiting for his food in a corner store and couldn't place his lines out. Closing the stores was not enough. Opening up many precincts is not enough. We need the 167 police officers back. We need to find a revenue for every can, and we need to bring 167 officers and then some back to the police force. If there was anything that the mayor can do before he leaves is bring our police officers back. And because we have declared violence a public health issue and the state is following suit, I am having a conversation with Assemblywoman Cleopatra Tucker to work on legislation that will give us the opportunity to present to the state that we should say that the numbers of the police should not go below a certain level given that violence is public health. And we need to follow the diagnosis that violence is public health. It is public health. In New York City, they're now discovering it all over the country. Something we knew all along. All along. Hundreds of our babies die annually. There's something wrong. 500 people die a year in a city. Something's wrong. Something's dreadfully wrong. And so it's public health. It is an emergency. We have new town almost every year in Newark, New Jersey. In New York City, we need to follow what they've done in terms of unprecedented crime reduction and not the broken windows model or the stop and frisk, the things they don't talk about, the high levels of police visibility, and the fact that they use data to identify what they call impact zones, or areas that are high in crime and violence, and we know these areas in Newark. They began to send targeted patrols and to identify areas, but also began to physically clean the area up. They cleaned up the vacant lots and the abandoned properties and took the graffiti off the walls. But in Newark, we want to take it a step further. We want to flood the area with mentorship programs, after school and literacy programs, job training, and family counseling. We want to support families, stabilize communities, and drive crime out. We know the crime areas in our city. There is a plan to reduce crime. We have to have it, and we have to implement it every single day. I am also aware that even though we have some of the lowest taxes in the state, many of us are concerned with the growing tax burden, particularly the one-third of us that pay property taxes in this city. The growing taxes are not commensurate with the level of services that we receive. That's right. We here in Europe want to stay below the governor's 2% cap and find ways not to raise our taxes and provide that we what we need. And I know right now that the most popular thing is to have these meetings, to go, to have you go around and uh, find these tax appeals and find ways to get money back. But the reality is, until we find some growing revenue and bring more homes and properties back to our tax rolls, taxes will continue to increase, and you'll be having these meetings until you're blue in the face. Hey, better watch Kim Corner. Don't you touch that down. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kyle Rashidi. I'm running for the Newark Public Schools Advisory Board on the Children First Team, along with Ariana Perello and Rashan Hassan. We are all parents here in the city of Newark. We all believe sincerely that all of our children deserve a quality education, and we're asking that you come out and vote for us on April 16th, 2013.
Growing up in these times, we as youth are so tired. What are you tired of? I'm tired of seeing rest in peace t-shirts. I'm tired of being ignored. I'm tired of ignorance. I'm tired of murders. I'm tired of murders. I'm tired of murders. I'm tired of schools closing. I'm tired of the stereotypes. I'm tired of the achievement gap. I'm tired of no jobs. I'm tired of people getting bullied. How will you use your voice to help things get better in your community? What will you use your power for? My name is Ariana Parano. I am currently serving as a North Public School Advisory Board member in the city of Newark. I am a proud parent of a nine-year-old, born and raised in the city of Newark, and a resident of the Central Ward. I am an advocate for the arts. I am a business owner and I'm for early childhood development. So please come out and vote Tuesday, April the 16th for the Children First team. Khalil Rashidi, Rashan Hassan, and myself, Ariana Perello, the Children First team. Hi, my name is Rashan Hassan, and I'm your candidate for the North Public Schools Advisory Board. I'm a Newark resident, proud father, advocate of educational equality, and proud member of the Children's First Team. I bring forward sound educational background and strong managerial experience. And I humbly ask for your vote, not only for myself, but for my teammates, Mr. Khalil Rashidi, Adiana Perello, and of course myself, Rashan Hassan, as we look forward to representing you and our community as the newest members of the North Public Schools Advisory Board. That is why the homesteading ordinance that I talked about earlier is important. It gives people the opportunity to go and abandon houses to fix them up and put them back on the tax rolls. Right. That is why we fight for the business community to pay their fair share. That is why we demand colleges and universities find ways to help us offset the municipal government costs, at least the burden of our homeowners. Our president said this in his State of the Union speech that it's the right thing to do to get everyone to pay their fair share. That billionaires shouldn't find ways to pay less taxes than their secretary. Billionaires shouldn't find a way to pay less taxes than their secretary. And big businesses in the city of New York should not get away with paying less than working people in the city of New York. But even more importantly, I'm going to discuss the many opportunities that we have to attract new industrial and poor businesses to our roles. We've got to find ways to engage the state to allow us to charge a tax on all the containers that enter our seafloor. Right. We, we need a municipal tax option that allows us to put fees on certain goods and services for a period of time targeting the over 1 million annual visitors to our city. That's and with right. the increase in development downtown, that disposable income will also increase. We need to get a dollar on all fares to and from the airport and Penn Station. We need to begin to collect our payroll taxes and our water bills from outstanding patrons. Yes, we have to deal honestly with the Passaic County Sewage Company yes, and stop them from robbing us. Yes, and finally, we have to re-engage the Port Authority yes, and any right. governor that goes into the office needs to be on board with allowing us to govern ourselves. Yes, to help us get what is only fair from an expanding airport and expanding seaport that sits on a large portion of our land. Now, while you guys are meeting about your taxes, some of us will be meeting with the governor to get our money that these people owe us. They talk about good, but I say we can take care of ourselves. In fact, we may be able to lend the state some money to give us a chance. My 
money is, the answer is in the money we already have that's leaving our community. Right. Leaving our community. Right. The economic development in this city, whether you know it or not, has been bustling because of, of our mayor's national status and the state's urban tax credits. We have become a magnet for business from Panasonic, Auto.com, Root Towers, NJ Pack, and many other businesses that will turn our downtown into a 24 hour business district. Inviting more foot traffic and more people choosing to stay in our city for more than just a day or a few hours. In fact, possibly deciding to live here and increase our population. And while we have grown so frustrated that we are missing the forest for the trees, others see around Moon's Corner and are poising themselves to take advantage of our city's growth. They believe in our city more than we do. We have an unparalleled chance of using these downtown opportunities to leverage development in our own neighborhoods, to bring a diverse set of businesses and services to our corridors, so we don't have to spend our money in West Orange and we can spend it on Bourbon Street. To right. change where we live, so that we don't have to transform just downtown, that we can transform our entire city. We have to ensure we are just not building beautiful structures, that it, but that it translates into human development and community development. The world is already out. We don't have to make connections to invite people to our city. They are already coming. You don't have to have a, a college degree to invite people to Newark. They are already coming. You don't have to have a special way to call to invite big businesses to the city of Newark. They are already coming. You don't have to have a special suit to invite people to Newark, New Jersey. They are already coming. In fact, they are already here. We will spend some $500 million a year outside of Newark. And almost $100 million of those dollars come from this part of the South Ward alone. $100 million from just the weak weight section of the South Ward alone. And I know it's true because I see you in the supermarket up there with me. <laughs> but we're going to key food tomorrow. I get more conversation on Moonful Avenue with my player than I get on Clinton Avenue. So I know it's true. We have the spending power. The young man said, what's in your hand? We got the money and the spending power in our hand. We're spending our money outside of our community. If we build our neighborhoods, the more than 5,000 people that live every day in that hospital will be able to come out and patronize the businesses in our city to help them grow and help them employ Newarkers. We have to build the corridors in our community. There's no sense to build Broadway Market and not build South Orange Avenue. There's no sense, no sense to build uh, uh, Mulberry Street and not build Clinton Avenue. There's no sense to build Hayes, uh, uh, to, to build Halsey Street and not build Central Avenue. Or Springfield Avenue. But this can only happen if we believe in your we got to get rid of the cynicism, we got to get rid of the opportunism, yes. and we got to get rid of the negativeness. Yes. This can only happen if we believe in the if yes, you have a vision. Yes. It's not enough just to be angry. You right. know what pressure makes a wise man mad. There's a step after that. That once you get angry, now you gotta get up and do something about it. It's not enough to just go to church on Sunday. After you pray about it, you gotta get up and do something about it. But what the heck you pray for if you're not gonna do nothing about it? You pray for strength so you can get up. You pray for courage so you can follow up. Why pray for victory if you ain't going even Finally, our education system is the glue to all of this. 
Whether you do it or not, the state has been in control of our system for 20 years. It's time for the state to go. We have to develop a unified and comprehensive strategy to get our schools back. We need our schools back. So we can't, we don't want an advisory board, we want a school board. We don't want you to compromise with the state, we want them to go home. We don't want their plans, we have our own plans. Yeah, we are witnessing a school reform process that is not about reforming schools. We have to reform our own schools and invite goodwill and fair-minded people to help us, not hedge fund groups and special interests. We cannot put the state out only to replace them with the Broad Foundation, or social media magnets, or corporate profiteers. We know what our children need. Let's organize and take our schools back, our buildings back, and our children's lives back. All of this is possible. All you have to do is believe. All of it is possible. All you have to do is believe. I heard a story of a man named Nehemiah. I got the news that a city was in ruin. That the gates were burning fire. He was saddened and struck by this and petitioned the king and prayed to God to allow him to go back to the city of his father and repair it. He wanted to build the wall around the city, a great wall that would restore the city to greatness. He was laughed at and scorned. He was talked about and lied. Oh, yeah, that's a familiar story. They tried everything they could to distract him. They even posed as his friends and followed his demise. He, he had faith, y'all, an unbridled faith, and he believed in the rightness of his cause and the greatness of his city. Yes. And he continued to build that wall. And so I see my city in distress. Yes. And I want to help repair it. And I can join you tonight to help me to build a wall. Ha <laughs> ha